Uh, I think I'm gonna do movie six today. That's a good idea. <laughs> Why, hello there, everybody. I was just admiring this lovely flower. Do you see the flower? It really is amazing, isn't it? Do you want the flower? Here, take it. Take the flower. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Teching and Barry back again. Welcome to the very much belated yet hotly anticipated One Piece Movie 6 review, Baron Omatsuri and the Secret Island. Ooh, it's so mysterious. I wonder what the Secret Island's going to be, right? Okay, um, this is the movie that is regarded by most of the One Piece fan base that have seen it as one of the darkest things in the entirety of the One Piece franchise. Um, there's certainly moments in the One Piece manga that kind of dips into areas of very dark, very disturbing, uh, but certainly when it comes to the movies, this is the darkest one. Just because, like, movies are usually about, like, yeah, the Straw Hats, they're on a movie adventure, it's not canon, hey! Hey, look, it's Chopper. He's going to be the king of this island of rare animals. Oh, look, the pirates are having a race. Oh, look, Zoro is cutting down his best friend that was just mentioned in order to free him from an evil curse. You know, just good times all around, right? You know, it's about having fun. It's about entertaining an audience or whatever. So typically they don't go that, you know, Junji Ito with it. But for whatever reason, for this one, they decided just, you know what? Let's do something different. Let's creep the audience out at a certain point. Let's first lure them in by thinking it's just a standard One Piece movie and it's just happy and fun and then slowly throughout the movie things get progressively more like horror-esque and then eventually Cronenberg-esque and then eventually just... whoa. So much like every other One Piece movie up until Strong World, this one had a March release. In this case, it was March 5th, 2005. And just like how Movie 4 kind of took a lot of plot beats from Alabasta, especially Gasparde, the main villain of Movie 4, he was very similar to Crocodile in a lot of respects. Um, and then Movie 5 took a lot of stuff from Skypea, what with like the um, Mayan civilization. It was kind of very similar to the Shandorians, and the whole plot was like an ancient ritual, and like it got religion involved a lot more, so a lot more stuff going on with Skypea which was the most recent arc at the time. Uh, movie 6 is just like those other ones where it takes the plot beats and the general feel, uh, at least the overarching feel, because underlying it, it's really creepy. But overall, it's kind of based off of the Davy backfight arc in the anime, uh, because there's like a lot of games involved. The idea of pirates coming together and participating in games for like a prize. Something else that would be revisited during Stampede with the pirate festival that they have. Why do these pirates keep going and accepting invitations to festivals. You're pirates, for God's sake. You get a letter and it's like, hey, come on over to Pirate Island, where a bunch of pirates are going to be. And we're going to have, you know, food and free presents, and you can compete to win even bigger presents, and there's treasure. Come on down, right? <laughs> It's like, why would anyone fall for that? Not even only the fact that this is probably a trap by other pirates or the marines, go figure on that. But the other idea is like, you're going to a party with a bunch of your worst enemies, essentially. Like, imagine you're at work or at school, and somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, do you want to go to a birthday party this weekend? And you're like, I don't know about that. Who's going to be there? And then the person proceeds to read off of a list of your worst enemies, the people that you hate the most on this earth, and they're all going to be there. I'd be like, well, count me in. Is there going to be cake? I'm like, there's going to be cake. I'm like, all right, then count me in, all right? So this movie starts off with the exact same kind of idea. Uh, it starts off with a very stormy sea, and it's kind of disturbing just in the beginning of it, but then it's slowly washed away when you see the Straw Hat Pirates in the opening credits, okay? But the idea is the Straw Hats have found a letter in a bottle floating at sea, and they take it out, and the letter says, <clears throat> and I quote, If you are a pirate among pirates among pirates, bring your crewmates to Omatsuri Island. So this is basically the One Piece equivalent of, like, a chain letter. They find this bottle with a letter. It's like, hey, if you're real pirates, and I mean if you're real pirates, 
Come on down, bring your crew, bring your ship, bring all of your valuables down to Festival Island. That's literally what Omatsuri means. It's actually a festival in Japan called Omatsuri, but it just literally means carnival or festival. So it's like, yeah, bring everything that you ever cherish down to Festival Island where all your dreams come true. We got great cuisine and Chopper perks up when he hears that. Like, great cuisine, we got spas and then Nami is instantly captivated by that. Like, they have spas. Spas, and then um, uh, they bring up, you know, beauties. We have wonderfully beautiful women, and then Sanji is, of course, like, women, right? Robin is the one reading off this letter. She really has disturbingly no input in this whatsoever. She doesn't bring up whether or not this is a good idea. Although I will say there is a fault in their advertising campaign, because they claim to be the only pleasure island located on the entire Grand Line. Clearly, Baron Omatsuri has not heard of Vacation Island or Spa Island or the Crystal Lagoon, and I'm very disappointed in him, because he did not do his market research first, okay? He's this is flagrant false advertising right here. Meanwhile, Usopp is the only person that has a brain in his head, because he's off to the side like, yeah, this is obviously a trap. <laughs> this is, is obviously, they're, they're trying to lure us in and, and rob us blind. Am I the only one that sees this? And Nami's like, what? Like, Nami literally sees the word spa, and she just turns into Sanji whenever Sanji hears the words beauty. And she she's just like, they have spas? We have to go, right? Zoro is kind of in a neutral approach. He doesn't really care either way. He's just kind of lifting weights, pumping iron, and he's just like, hey, Luffy, what do you think? Now, Luffy didn't even need to hear the rest of that entire letter because he's just like, wait a second, what did the first part of that letter say again? You know, before all of the beauties and the spas and everything. And it's like, oh yeah, if you're a pirate amongst pirates amongst pirates, that's me, Kaisa Kawoni, Orowanar. Let's go, everybody, because we're pirates. Pirates. It's like, okay, this is not a bad movie. It isn't, but the setup for this, I mean, come on now. Who would be foolhardy enough to just go with this? Well, clearly not just the Straw Hats, as you'll soon see. Baron Omatsuri has been leading pirate crews to their doom for decades on this island. So, man, it's just like... Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me like what, like like a hundred pirate crews, whatever. Baron Omatsuri, he's got the big brain here. It's just offer them spas, money, and women, and everything. They'll just come flocking over, whatever. Anyway, we have the opening title sequence, and it's actually very pleasant, where we see the kind of an overhead shot view of the Mary traveling on the Grand Line. It passes by an island, and there's just people like you know hanging out on the beach, watching as the Mary is sailing by, and then it has another view over the skies. You it's a, it's a cool little view. Very peaceful, tropical music is playing in the background. Like, this is just going to be a standard adventure for the Straw Hat crew where nothing weird is going to happen. <laughs> They're just going to arrive on the island and just have a good time, man. Well, they uh, hard cut then to arriving on Omatsuri Island, which just turns out to be completely deserted. There's really not much there. Robin mentions that there were flowers all over the map, which was on in the bottle, so that's how they could get there. There was like a map to the island. However, she mentions, oh, there, there are no flowers here. It's strange. The map said there's flowers all over the place, but it's just like a dense jungle and like a deserted beach. Um, in an interesting little queue up, though, there's a moment where Chopper is like, hey, do you hear something? And like, no one else can hear anything. And then Luffy just kind of runs up and he's like, that way. And so it's like Luffy could hear something that no one else could except for Chopper. So maybe a reference to the voice of all things. There's also a random psychic girl in this because of course there is. Anyway, they run through the jungle and it turns out they just end up in this giant city. It's like they end up in Las Vegas in the middle of like a deserted jungle, right? They just show up and there's this massive city and lights and there's a crowd cheering for them. Uh, there's a globe there, an actual globe of modern earth like the earth we're from so i guess that means that africa is canonical in the one piece world okay that's fine i guess alabasta was egypt this whole time it's just so weird that that's there um but anyway they show up and everyone's like cheering for them he's like welcome to omatsuri island and everyone's like wow this is crazy look at the festival it's 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 great it's awesome this is festival island and then and the, the baron appears and man let me tell you this guy knows how to make an appearance okay he shows up with a herd of elephants with so this is it's just perfect. I just ended elephant facts yesterday, and now we're moving on to frog facts, you know? And now Baron Omatsuri decides to show up with elephants. Well, I've already talked about them enough. I can't go on with it. Anyway, he shows up on top of these elephants, and the Baron seems, well, 
totally like the villain of a One Piece movie, but you know, you don't know that just by looking at him, except he has a very devious villainous mustache goatee combo. Also a weird flower growing out of his uh, shoulder. And on top of that, there's also leaves and like, you know, plants growing out of every human being's head on this island. So yeah, I'm sure that's not gonna call back to anything, right? Whatever. Anyway, the Baron introduces himself. He's like, I am Baron Omatsuri, and welcome to my island. On this island, you will enjoy luxuries that no other pirate crew has access to. You and your crewmates can enjoy fine dining, spas, and everyone's like excited and happy, and he's like, <clears throat> however, first you must compete in the trials of hell. And everyone's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> they just kind of go with it. Luffy hears it. It's like, Trials of Hell? Count me in! That sounds like the most epic thing out of everything on this island, right? Yeah! Okay, you know how Luffy is, you know, he's a very energetic fella. He's Luffy, and he loves to eat and everything like that. That's really the only notes on Luffy's character they hit for half of this movie. And we'll get to it when we get to that point, but it kind of causes some serious problems later down the line. Anyway, he's like, guys, you know, trials of hell, why not? Let's give it a go. And so this giant crowd is there, and they're all cheering, and Baron Omatsuri's like, all right, the first trial of hell will be goldfish catching. So they got to pick, you know, a member of the Straw Hats, and then the Baron has, has to select a champion, and then they compete in goldfish catching, okay? So, you know, the little nets you got to do, it's more common at, like, Japanese festivals and stuff, but it's like, basically, you have a little bowl of goldfish, and you have, like, this net, and the net is made out of, like, paper, so it, like, dissolves in the water. Water, and the idea is you like put the net in the water and try to catch a goldfish and if you can catch it you can win a prize or the goldfish itself right there's versions of it here in like you know county fairs that I've been to but it wasn't exactly the same thing so Usopp steps up and he's like hey I'm a goldfish catching champion I'll do it and then the Baron selects his champion Muchi Goro who's like you know kind of a chubby guy he also has a leaf sticking out of his head he wears goggles kind of a dorky kind of character but it's then revealed that the goldfish isn't like a regular goldfish it's a giant goldfish Sea King that also happens to be Muchi Goro's pet. And they're not going to be using tiny little nets to catch it. They're going to be using these giant nets, like e extendable nets in order to catch it. Or at least Muchi Goro has the giant net and Usopp just has the little tiny net. So that's the whole idea. Like, there's no way they could possibly win this. However, it's the Straw Hat Pirates. So by all working together, they do a really cool combo move. Robin uses her arms to, like, knock it out of Muchi Goro's bucket and then Chopper punches it really hard and lands in Usopp's bucket. And so the Straw Hat end up winning and defeating Muchi Goro and the Baron is absolutely flabbergasted by this. He's just like what? That is most unorthodox. How could you possibly defeat Muchi Goro? That is incredible. Well, um that was only the first trial of hell. We still have many more trials remaining. Mm, yes. Now, at this point, Nami in particular is kind of had it with this shit, because this was not in the brochure. You know, it was like spas and food. You know, this wasn't about that. So she's like, you know what? I, we're just going to leave. So she just kind of storms off, and the Straw Hats go back into the jungle. Meanwhile, while this is going on, a strange, mysterious individual is watching the Straw Hats from afar. I'm not really sure about who he is, but he has a toothbrush mustache. And we all know from history who had a toothbrush mustache. Mustache. That's right. Charlie Chaplin is spying on the Straw Hat Pirates. I always knew he was going to be Eam Sama this entire time. Anyway, we have this weird scene where we're doing, like, POV through the jungle. It's at this point that I should bring up this movie has very different animation style and way more, like, 3D CGI than all the other One Piece movies up until then. Honestly, I feel like the staff with this movie decided to do everything different. Like, the plot was going to be very different from all the other ones we've had up until now. The themes are definitely going to be different. The tone, very different. And also, even the animation itself, very different. Um, it's kind of jarring the first time you watch it, and I've had to watch this movie not even kidding like four times because I know it took me like a year to review this and there's been plenty of times where I've sat down and watched the entire movie and it's like okay I watched the movie I'm gonna do my review but then stuff happened and I didn't end up doing the review and then months would go by and then I would forget like stuff that happens in every scene so I'd have to go back and rewatch it so I've watched this movie at least four times and the animation actually doesn't bother me at this point actually it's really unique to see like a fresh new look for the straw hats um sometimes it looks a little choppy but I think it works overall, right? So, you know, kudos for them for trying something different. 
Anyway, while they're wandering through the jungle, it's like this weird POV style where you're seeing things from, like, Nami's perspective. So it's like you just see a map, like, get pulled up, and Nami's, like, looking at the map, and people are arguing and everything. And as they're going through the jungle, they notice that, like, this is weird. The jungle seems to be, like, shifting or moving. Like, we can't find our way back to the beach. Can't find our way back to the Mary. Hmm, I wonder if that's going to call back to anything. And then they finally discover a giant stadium out in the middle of the jungle. It just seemed like they like, popped up out of nowhere. And the Baron is located there, already ahead of them. And he's like, ah, you cannot escape this island. Are you ready for the second trial of hell? This one will be Ring Toss. And everyone's like, what? Okay. And so this one is going to be kind of similar to uh, the fourth movie, Dead End Adventure, where they had like the pirate race. Kind of similar, where they get on these like waver-like contraptions. They're like boats or like speed boats or whatever. And, you know, they have different teams and they have to take these giant like life preserver things and like throw them over the opposite team and so it's like ring toss but on like a canal moving on speedboats at like 80 miles an hour so that's pretty cool right so for the straw hats they decide that you know don't let any of the devil fruit users partake in this challenge because they could fall off and drown so it's Zoro and Sanji on one team I'm sure that'll go perfectly fine and then we have Usopp and Nami on the other team meanwhile Baron Omatsuri has the uh, the Keiru uh, siblings they're like a bunch of like really old people that are all like based off a of frog so there we go the frog siblings that's what i'm talking about frog facts coming to a youtube channel near you very soon probably not at the end of this video but someday this is your frog fact okay anyway so they're like you know a bunch of like old geezers that are like you know driving these speedboats and one of them communicates only in like haiku poems so that's interesting i guess meanwhile while that's going on we cut back to the hotel which is actually pretty fabulous i mean they got a nice little pool area the lobby looks nice this is where Luffy and Nami and Chopper and Robin are hanging out while the rest of the crew are participating in the ring toss game. And this is where the Straw Hats start to realize something's a little up here. First off, we have Luffy who gets rocks thrown at his head by the toothbrush mustache kind of dude. And it actually is kind of a funny scene because Luffy's like in the lobby and then the old man with the mustache is on the upper level and he's like throwing rocks at Luffy to get his attention and he throws like normal rocks at him. But then there's a scene where he's just picking up this giant boulder to just chuck at Luffy and he's just like hey stop doing that and then so Luffy chases after him eventually catches him and the old man basically just does the uh <clears throat> leave this island and never return terrible things happen here if you stay here you will lose all of your nakama and then Luffy's just like what and he turns away and the old man is just gone and he's just like what okay whatever and Luffy just chooses to ignore that warning and just go about his regular day day because Luffy doesn't really do anything for the first half of this movie for that reason. Um, meanwhile, we have Robin kind of chilling out uh, next to the pool or whatever. There's like some lawn chairs and stuff, and she's just hanging out there. Muchi Goro, who was the, the champion from the goldfish catching, he shows up to give her a drink, and she begins to kind of like interrogate him about the island and the Baron. You know, it's like, oh, so this Baron guy, what's up with him? And Muchi Goro is like, oh, the Baron, he's awesome. You know, he used to be the captain of our pirate crew. Yeah, he's a really great man. And she's like, hmm, I see, yes, interesting. You know, I read something interesting about this island. There is a rare flower here called the Lily Carnation. What's up with that? And so she's interrogating him. Meanwhile, we have Chopper who just wanders off. He's just, like, eating an apple or something. He's just like, there's something up with this place. I'm going to go investigate. And like, all right, Detective Chopper, you just, you know, lead the way, right? And this is where the vibe of the movie starts to kind of go sideways. See, that's the weird thing with this movie. It doesn't gradually go from, like, happy to, like, really dark in tone. No, it kind of is all over the place, where you'll have, like, a really happy moment and an energetic, like, typical One Piece, but then it'll just be, like, really creepy. And then back to energetic and happy, and then, like, hmm, something's up here, right? And so while we have this really, uh, like, action-y, you know, high intense scene where the Straw Hats are, like, driving these, like, speedboats and trying to do the ring toss and everything, and, like, Zoro and Sanji are, like, arguing with each other. While that's going on, cut to Chopper, who's, like, investigating the ghost town because, like, aside from the, the uh, hotel that they're staying at, everywhere else in town is kind of, like, dilapidated and sort of falling apart. They also bring up that there's, like, no other guests here. Like, they're the only ones. So that's that raises a red flag. So, I don't know. Chopper just senses. just He just has, like, its animal instincts that something's up here. 
might also have something to do with the mass grave that he finds on the island right outside of town. That is also probably something that should, you know, bring up your attention of like, yeah, maybe this guy's not all he's cracked up to be, right? So Usopp literally finds a mass graveyard outside of town. He's like, What's this? And then at the same time that's going on, some random dude dressed like a pirate. He basically looks like, imagine if your dad dressed like a pirate, okay? Maybe your dad is a very imposing individual, but whatever. He's like a dorky kind of dad dressing up like a pirate, and he's pretending to, like, capture Chopper. Like, thinking, he's like, oh, you're one of Baron Omatsuri's men. I'll give you a beating. And then it, his family shows up, and it's, like, his two daughters and his one son. And so he's trying to act tough for his children. He's like, oh, don't worry, kids. I found one of Baron Omatsuri's Suri's servants over here. I'm gonna give him one, two. Okay, listen up. You know, because Chopper goes into his human point and he's about to beat the shit out of him. He's like, ah, da, 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 da. no, hold on, just listen. Um, okay, so I'm their dad and I'm supposed to be like courageous and like, you know, we're, I'm supposed to be the one that's like gonna win the fight. So can you just kind of go along with it? And Chopper is a nice guy, so he's like, Okay, fine. And so he's like, oh no, you have defeated me. Your your father is so strong. I never stood a chance. And so he's just like, ah, yes, beware me, for my name is, um, uh, uh he never gets a name. Yeah, the entire movie never gets a name. They just call him Papa. So I guess like you could just call him, uh, you know, Pirate Daddy if you want to, or Papa, either way. Uh, doesn't actually get a real name, but he um, mentions that he actually used to be a member of the Tea Room Pirates. Oh, so pleasant, the Tea Room Pirates. And uh, his children actually have names. They, they gave them names for some reason. Uh, Rosa and Daisy. Rosa's like his older daughter, and then Daisy is like a younger daughter, and then Rick. Rick, oh, this is, this is the origin of Rick right here. Rick is his son, right? And so the idea is they were all part of a pirate crew, I'm thinking like one day he was just reading the paper and he's like, you know what? We should become pirates, but we will be cultured pirates. We will be tea drinking pirates. And so they set out to sea with as the tea room pirates, just a single father and his three kids, like nobody else on the crew. That's going to go well, whatever. Anyway, eventually they heard about Omatsuri Island and they arrived there, except the Baron was trying to like capture them. And so they freaked out and they ran away and they've basically been living on the island, you know, uh, you know living off of the land for like the last couple of weeks, you know, kind of like, like shipwrecked and they have no place to go. Right. So he's kind of like, you know, to chopper, you know, daddy pirate is just like, Hey, uh, can you like help us out? You know, you're not with the Baron. You're just a regular pirate crew. Okay, well, um, you know, terrible things happen here, but also can you help us because we're kind of stranded. So pause for a moment. We'll get back to that group later. I'm sure they're not going to do pretty much anything. So now at the ring toss game, uh, there's some pretty fun moments. Um, there's a moment where uh, Usopp and Nami's ship catches on fire and they find these boxes, like these emergency boxes. And Nami's like, oh, they're like emergency boxes that'll help us in times of need. So she opens hers up and there's just like handmade cups, like little mugs, and they're, they're really fancy mugs and she's like what am I gonna do with these and then Usopp opens up his and it's actually like a hang glider it, that like attaches to his body and like the wind catches him and he goes flying off and it's weird because this happens out of nowhere and Nami thinks that Usopp is abandoning her you know it's like one second Nami looks up and Usopp just has a glider on and is flying away and the way Nami interprets that is you're abandoning me how could you it was like Obviously not his fault, Nami, but okay, whatever. There's also a pretty funny scene with Zoro and Sanji where um, the, uh, the the opposing team, the, the frog siblings, are approaching in their speedboat. Zoro takes out his swords, slices up the speedboat, but one of the members of the frog siblings is a shipwright, so he, like, jumps out and, like, really quick, like, fixes the boat, so now it's even bigger, and then Sanji, you know, kicks the crap out of it and destroys it again, but then the shipwright jumps out and fixes it a third time, and now it's, like, a giant drill and then Zoro and Sanji have just had enough and just slice and kick the crap out of it and then it just explodes so that's pretty funny I guess um, the game does end with the Straw Hats winning although teamwork is kind of strained at this point um, Nami is really pissed off at Usopp for leaving her behind even though it wasn't his fault you know all Usopp had to say was like Nami I literally opened the box and a giant hang glider attached itself to me and then I flew off you know I, I didn't do that on purpose and Nami's 
like, yeah, whatever. And then, of course, Zoro and Sanji were always at each other's throats, and so that's not working good for them right now. So you start to notice the idea of the movie. And then Luffy is still off to the side, just like, wow, look at this place. Yeah! And so Luffy is completely none the wiser, does not really seem to even pay attention or care that part of his crew has disappeared. Like, Chopper's been gone for hours at this point. Robin is not there. Also, you know, his crewmates are obviously fighting with each other, and Luffy's just like, I want food! I'm like, look, look, look. I understand Luffy sometimes can be distracted, but that's not his entire character, okay? Like, he, he cares about his crew. In fact, what is the one thing that Luffy cares about more than food, more than becoming King of the Pirates, more than treasure, more than anything? His crew, his family, his Nakama, all right? And it feels like at some point Luffy should have like, hey, why are you guys fighting? Don't fight, you know? He's like, hey, where's Chopper at? And they, he doesn't pick up on this until way later in the movie when shit already gets live. Anyway, after the second challenge, the Baron invites the Straw Hats to a banquet. And he's just like, oh, yes, uh, come this evening to the banquet where we will have delicious food prepared by our five-star chef. And this is a really cool scene where the chef is like this big dude with a giant spatula and he has like this huge grill kind of like a really large like hibachi style restaurant and he throws a bunch of food and vegetables and stuff on the giant skillet and he has like ice skates except they're oil so he's like skating around this giant super hot skillet you know with these oil skates and he's like preparing food like hibachi style and uh, Sanji sees this and he kind of takes that to be a challenge and he's just like ah, oh, I'm gonna cook a meal that's a hundred times better than this piece of shit and so he, he jumps up with his own skate and goes around and they start to prepare. They have like a grill like cooking battle, which is pretty cool. Uh, meanwhile, while this is going on, uh, Robin has just left and she kind of meets the Baron and Robin is like, I thought I would go out and get some fresh air and look for this lily carnation. And Baron is just like, hmm, is the flower on my shoulder not to your liking? And Robin's like, mm, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm just going to be right back, okay? So she leaves. Um, and then also at the same time this is going on, Nami doesn't want anything to deal with Usopp, so she goes over and actually sits down and starts to kind of flirt with Moochie Goro, you know? And so he's like, oh, hey, Moochie-san, how are you doing tonight? And Moochie's like, what are you talking to me for? I, I mean, yeah, I mean, how you doing there? I'm, uh, I'm Moochie Goro. Yeah, I'm pretty cool in my own right. So that's kind of a funny moment, but <laughs> this is where shit kind of hits the fan, all right? And this is actually a very, very creepy kind of uh, transition that we go through here, okay? Because from one side of things we're at, and also this movie really does a thing where it messes with time because when the Straw Hats are at the banquet, it seems like it's nighttime, like there's no sun out anymore, it's all dark, right? But then we cut over to Robin and Chopper and they're like exploring the island trying to figure out the mystery and it's like deep sunset and like the whole island is like bathed in twilight. So the movie tries to like make it kind of disconcerting to even watch because it's like, darkness and it's like nighttime here but then it's like bathed in like an endless sunset over here and it's just this very creepy kind of vibe you feel right so chopper and the tea room pirates you know with papa you know daddy pirate or whatever they find an old wanted poster of a pirate crew called the red arrows the red arrow pirates and the bounty is ripped off but it's very clearly the baron plus a bunch of people that are on the island like all of the servants like muchigoro and everybody are on this wanted poster however chopper brings up that everybody in the wanted poster looks the same as they do right now like they met them like Muchi Goro looks the same in the picture as he does right now but the Baron looks way younger in this picture and the picture itself the wanted poster itself looks really really old like it's falling apart and stuff like that so it's like hmm, what's going on and then all of a sudden the Baron shows up behind them and he fires an arrow right at them and it's like oh and really creepy music it's like really interesting cues like violin music it's a soundtrack that is played in the in One Piece before although it might have originated from the this movie it's that really creepy kind of like tense violin music like stringed instrument music playing then we have Robin, who's examining a ship graveyard. We saw traces of this earlier in the movie when they were goldfish uh, catching. Um, there was a moment when Chopper and Luffy fell into the water, and Sanji dived in after them, and he didn't notice, but there was, like, a bunch of pirate ships at the bottom of the ocean, like wrecks. Okay, so it's like, something's going on here. And so Robin finds a ship that's on shore that's the Baron's old ship, the Red Arrow pirate ship, and she's like, this ship was completely destroyed, probably by a storm or something, but it's like... The 
the wreckage and the wood, it, it's been on this island for, like, years, like, decades. Like, this did not just happen, okay? So now we cut back over to Muchigoro and Nami, and this is probably the freakiest moment, one of the freakiest moments of the movie. There's another one after this that probably takes the taco, but this one is also up there, where... Muchigoro is going on and on about the Baron and how awesome he is. He's like, yeah, he's our captain. He's great. I bet he could even defeat Roger if he fought him. And so Nami's just like, Roger? Which Roger do you mean? And Muchigoro is like, well, you haven't heard of Roger? Are you kidding me? Gold Roger. And Nami's like, Gold Roger, but he died like, 22 years ago you're, 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 you're because Muchigoro was talking like the captain the Baron could defeat Roger like in the present tense like you know it was like if we ever run into Roger he could take him and Nami's like he died like 22 years ago he was executed and Muchigoro was like that's impossible I just ran into him recently it was right before we hit that storm and oh boy <laughs> so Muchigoro begins to talk in like a weird trance like that storm, that, that was a really rough storm. It was, it ravaged our ship. I, I, don't, I, I don't, I don't, and then he like puts his hands up on his face and Nami's like, are you okay? What's wrong? And then he just like lowers his hands and his entire body is like all shriveled up and like desiccated. Like his lips are all chapped, his skin's like peeling off and he looks like he's like been dead for like, it looks like he's like a beached corpse for like the past six weeks. And he's like, oh. And Nami's like, ah! And it's like, there are zombies all of a sudden. And so everybody kind of freaks out over this, right? Um, and then it's at that moment that all the lights kind of go out in the banquet and the Straw Hats kind of reconvene. So the ones that are there, so Sanji, Zoro, Luffy, Nami, they all kind of come together and they're just like, okay, but where is everybody right now? Like, where's Usopp? He's not here. Where's Robin? Oh, she's not here. Where's Chopper? And that's like the one moment in the movie. We're like halfway through when Luffy kind of finally realizes like, Oh, we're kind of up shit creek without a paddle here. All the crew just kind of disappeared. Why didn't I notice this before, right? And it's not because of magic or devil fruit powers or anything. They just didn't, like, Luffy just didn't notice. He was too preoccupied with food, I guess. Whatever. Anyway, that's a little bit out of character for Luffy. I think he would have noticed if his crewmates were, like, fighting with each other and if they just disappeared, right? Um, anyway, right when they're about to go look for their crewmates, the Baron appears here. That's another thing, too. The Baron kind of has the ability to teleport in this movie, sort of. Like, he just appears, like, where Robin is at, like, outside of the, uh, the town, outside the banquet hall, and then he'll just reappear there later, but then again, it does kind of mess with time a little bit, so it's a little bit kind of disorienting. Also, Robin does witness something on top of the mountain. She sees this, like, giant stem thing, like a flower stem, poking out of the top of the mountain, and then Baron is like, ah, do you see it? That is the lily carnation, and it's like this the size of a mountain, and she's just like, what is that thing? And she's like freaking out, and then we just cut away. So back at the banquet, the Baron appears, and he's like, are you all ready for the third trial of hell? And the crew is like, no, we want to find our crewmates. And so Sanji and Zoro just kind of leave, and then the Baron is just like, ah... So sad that they left before they saw what this challenge really entailed. And it's revealed the third challenge is a shooting game. So it's literally all the crewmates of the Baron show up. All the people with leaves on their head have rifles and a skateboard. And they're all chasing after the Straw Hats like most dangerous game style. Like it's, a, it's an island-wide bounty hunt trying to eliminate the Straw Hat crew and try to kill them and feed them this giant flower stem thing growing out of the side of a mountain, okay? So, yeah, a little bit unusual. A little bit of a more unique plot thread than, like, the Cursed Sword or, like, an ex-marine that turned into a pirate. You know, this is a little bit more unique. A giant flower plant thing the size of a mountain that wants to absorb the lives of human beings. That's... That's something. That's interesting. It's also at this point that a lot of the other members of the Baron's crew, like not just Muchi Goro, but also the chef and the frog siblings and everybody are beginning to look more zombie-like. And they're just like, uh, can't move, so tired. And they look like they're about to like, you know, collapse and just disappear, right? And so there's something really weird going on here with the crew. Like they're obviously not alive, but they're also not dead. Like there's something up here. Believe me, we haven't even gotten to the freakiest part of this movie yet, okay? But moving back to Chopper now, the tentacles of the Lily Carnation begin to like grab uh, one of the kids and so Chopper shows up and like punches it but then he gets absorbed instead and the Baron is there and he's just like ah this is the first time I've ever fed a devil fruit
fruit user to the lily carnation. Oh, it will be so, so exuberant, you know? And so Chopper gets, like, absorbed into this thing, and based off of his life energy, all of the members of the Red Arrow Pirates, like Muchi Goro and everybody, begin to revive. They, like, wake up from a deep sleep, like, oh, Captain, what's wrong? And he's like, well, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. And the Baron is like, ah, Muchi Goro, it's so, it's so good that you're awake. Ah, it's okay, everything will be fine now. And he's like, but I don't remember anything, Captain. Oh, don't worry, you don't need to remember a thing. <laughs> everything will be fine, Muchi Goro. <laughs> There's also another member I forgot to mention up at this point, uh, DJ Gappa, who resembles a Kappa. And he rides around on a skateboard, and he has, like, a hat. And, uh, yeah, he's like a musician, and he ends every, uh, sentence in poo. So, okay, he's there. Anyway, um, it's very clear that there are, like, zombies that keep getting revived through the Lily Carnation, absorbing the life essence from all the people that he's fed to over the years, and so in order to keep his crew alive. So his original crew, the Red Arrow Pirates, died in this horrible storm like 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, back when Roger was still alive. And then the ship washed ashore here on Omatsuri Island, and everybody died except for the Baron. The Baron is the only one that is actually still alive, because he's aging like normal, right? And so he could never get over the loss of his crew, so he began to feed other pirate crews to this Lily Carnation, and it managed to like revive his crew as like these plants zombie looking things okay but if he did not keep feeding them food just like if you don't give a, a plant enough water or nutrients it'll eventually wither and die same thing with his crew okay so it's like every couple of days or weeks or whatever he has to lure a new pirate crew there and he's been doing this for over two decades in order to keep his crew alive so just that premise alone kind of messed up he's just like my crew they've died years ago but they'll never leave me I'll feed as many people as I have to this giant flower thing in order to keep them alive. <laughs> so yeah, the Baron is kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs at this point, but can Luffy stop him? Well, first we have the toothbrush pirate guy, I'll just call him. His name is Brief. And he's like, ah, I, I've dug tunnels all under the island to escape the Baron. So he was there for several years, I guess. And so he lures Luffy. He doesn't lure him. He, like, saves Luffy, like, takes him down into the tunnels right when Luffy is deciding, wait a second, I need to save my crew! And it is like, why didn't you think of that at any point earlier than this, Luffy? But whatever. Anyway, Brief explains to him that he was the leader of like an archaeological pirate crew, kind of similar to Pedro's Knox Expeditionary Party, and they were a really good close-knit crew, they all loved each other, they all had a toothbrush mustache, and they sailed the seven seas! But then of course they landed at Omatsuri Island, and all of his crewmates died, and now he's the only one remaining. So he's basically telling Luffy like, hey, the Baron is really strong, he's got the Lily Carnation, he has like these really powerful arrows, you can't just run in and fight him. And with that being said, Luffy runs off to fight him. Um, and and this is the moment that gets not the freakiest, but still very disturbing. So Luffy runs up to the Baron, and none of his crew are around. So it's like, what happened to the rest of the Straw Hats? And the Baron takes out these arrows, and he begins to fire them like dead shot right at Luffy. And every single arrow hit a different limb. So Luffy tries to punch him with Gamu Gamu no pistol, but the arrow hits his hand and like pins him to a wall, so he can't move that arm anymore. And just like... Your crew will now be absorbed into the Lily God Nation. And we see these horrifying scenes. It's like, remember that scene in Saba Odi when all the Straw Hats were being sent flying by Kuma? But we didn't know that yet. We thought they were, like, going to be sent somewhere to die or something. Like, the Straw Hats were being separated and the bubbles were popping. Yeah, it's like that times a hundred. Because now we see each of the Straw Hats getting glorped into this giant flower thing. And they're all, like, they're, they're knocked out and their eyes are, like, blank. And they're like... <gasps> Like, getting sucked into this flower. And so, it's like, ah, it seems that Chopper's been absorbed. And Luffy's like, Chopper, no! And he tries to punch him with his other hand. The Baron fires the arrow and pins both of Luffy's arms to the wall. And he's like, now Robin will be absorbed. And Robin gets sucked into the plant. Like, Robin, no! Luffy tries to kick him, shoots an arrow through one of his legs. It gets pinned to the wall. Then Usopp gets absorbed. Luffy tries to kick with his last leg. It gets pinned to the wall. He's like, no! And then Sanji gets absorbed. Like, no! And now the only one left is Zoro. So Luffy, his, the only, his, all of his limbs are pinned to a wall right now with these arrows. So he can just like stretch out his neck and he just fires his neck like Gummo Gummo no Kane and fires it straight to try to rescue uh, Zoro. And the uh, Baron takes out like three arrows and fire it. And a few of them like cut Luffy's neck. And one of them looks like it, like it, it, like it just hits him right in the head. Like it just fires right through his head. But it's revealed Luffy actually catches it with his teeth and he just breaks the arrow. And he's like trying to rescue uh, Zoro, but his neck can't stretch far enough and then it just like retracts and he's like no 
and then like all of the crew get absorbed and like assimilated into this thing and the baron is like ha 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 ah you thought you had strong bonds as a crew but look at what happened only a few arguments and you were completely uh, separated you fell apart as a team there is no such thing as friends that always last forever that's why you need to have a crew made of plant zombies. It's the only way, Luffy! <laughs> At this point, Brief pops out of one of his hidey holes, grabs Luffy, and drags him in. Also, the Tea Room pirates are inside of his, like, like secret base as well. And so they begin to patch Luffy up. You know, the, they freed him with all the arrows, and they bandaged him up and everything like that. And they're like, okay, well, uh, good news is your crew is probably not dead yet, but bad news is if they got assimilated into Lily Carnation, they are... They're probably gonna die pretty soon, but we still have to come up with a plan, right? Meanwhile, the Baron is outside blasting explosive arrows at the ground to try to get them to leave their uh, secret base. Luffy walks out and ready for round two with the Baron. It's one of those things in One Piece movies where Luffy tries to defeat the main villain early on but can't, and then by the end of the movie he's like recovered and he's like, let's do this. Except in this movie it's literally like five minutes. Like, Luffy gets the shit beat out of him by the Baron, gets stabbed with the arrows, his crew gets assimilated, and then it's like he rests for like five minutes. Also so Daisy is psychic. She's like, I can hear the voice of your crew. They are still alive. It's just like, the f are you are you psychic? Why? Are you like, what is this? Do you have a devil fruit power? Do you have observation hockey? I guess. Maybe the girl is like Isa from like Skypea. That's what they're basing her off of. But it just comes out of nowhere. And it makes no sense. And it's just like psychic girl for some reason. All right, whatever. It's like the point is, it's like Luffy, your crew's not dead yet, but you can't defeat the Baron the way you are. And Luffy's of course like, I'm gonna defeat the Baron the way I am. So he pops out, and it's like at at first, this is kind of brilliant with this movie. You think that this is gonna be the climax, right? This this is it. Like, this is the end of the movie. Luffy's crew has been taken from him. He's super pissed. He emerges. He fights the Baron. He's breaking all of the arrows. The, the Baron fires a volley of arrows at him. He picks up a rock. It blocks all the arrows. He crushes the rock. And then he just goes. And he, like, punches the Baron really hard in the face. And then he proceeds to just knock the ever-loving shit out of the, um, the Lily Carnation, the stem. He's, like, punching the crap out of it. And it's, like, getting knocked around, like, flopping in the wind. You know? And so it's, like, you think, and, like, triumph music is playing in the background so it's like oh okay Luffy punches out the Baron he beats the shit out of the Lily Carnation and you think like the Straw Hats are just gonna like get released from this thing they're all gonna fall out like after 18 got kicked out of cell you know they're gonna be covered in goo but overall they're gonna be okay like that's what you're expecting to happen because it's like the finale of the movie no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is where the Junji Ito shit happens, okay? So, Luffy punches the Baron, knocks around the stem, he lands, he breaks the stem in half. And, like, you know, everybody's cheering him on, like, Brief is cheering him on, and, and, uh, Daddy Pirate and all of his family members are cheering him on, like, the psychic girl is like, way to go, Luffy, like, everything's happy. And then the animation just shifts, where everything is bathed in blood red, and the Lily Carnation, which, by the way, is all CG, it's like a 3D model, begins to break apart like a dying tree in the background, like it begins to split. And so Luffy just kind of turns around as the creepy violin music is still playing in the background, and the giant stem poking out of the mountain has now just turned into a huge cloud of arrows. Like, it's like basically a mountain just turns into arrows. Like, there's tens of thousands, maybe even more of these things, right? And it's just like a giant volley of arrows, and Luffy's like, what? And then the music gets more intense, and then we cut over to the Baron who gets up, and then the lily, the, the happy little flower dancing on his shoulder the entire movie gets all creepy, and like spots begin to grow on it, like, blah, blah. and then it just merges into like a giant piranha plant, like a demon piranha plant from Super Mario, like, blah. and then it turns into this huge Cronenberg-esque monstrosity and abomination where all of the Straw Hat's bodies are, like, fused with this thing, but, like, not their actual bodies, it's just, like, their shapes. So we see, like, they're the shape of, like, Nami, Robin, Sanji, Chopper, all melded together inside of this weird plant thing, right? And you can, like, hear their voices, they're just like, Luffy! Luffy! And Luffy, like, like, this expression right here says it all! This is the expression on Luffy's face, like, <gasps> I didn't sign up for this. What the hell? I thought this was a happy adventure, you know? Ah, oh, what the hell is this f 
freaky shit, right? Okay. So, as Luffy is distracted by, oh, I don't know, all of his best friends and the people he loves more than family coalesced into this weird abomination plant thing, the entire cloud of arrows just just washes over Luffy, and he gets impaled by these things. His arms, his leg, his chest, his head, his neck. He just gets run through with, like, thousands of arrows. And, I mean, look at this. It looks like Luffy is a damn zombie here. His skin is all, like, this weird shade, and his eyes are all whited out, and he's just like... Ugh! You know, and he's, like, still moving toward the Baron, like... Nakama! Give me back my Nakama! And it's like... Holy crap! <laughs> Like, the movie's almost over. Like, how are you going to end this, right? Like, Luffy got ran through like Swiss cheese. The Straw Hats are all like zombies. It's just like, what are you going to do from this point onward? Well, let me tell you. If you thought Luffy was the hero of One Piece, <laughs> I got something to tell you. You're, you're grossly mistaken. No, no, no. It's not Luffy. It's not Zoro. It's not any of the Straw Hats. It's not Chopper. It's not Usopp. It's not anybody. The real hero of One Piece Movie 6 is the random dad pirate who was never given a proper name because it was his story the whole time. He was a coward. He didn't stand up for his family. He was trying his best, but he always fell up short, and his children were so disappointed in him. Well, Papa Daddy Pirate, it's time for you to shine. It's time for you to pick up the Baron's arrow and hold it taut and stalwart, and you aim it straight at that demon plant carnation piranha, whatever the hell it is, and you fire that shot with every ounce of determination and courage you can muster from your soul, sir. And he does! His family cheering him on in the background. He fires this arrow and shots the Lily Carnation. One arrow passes through this thing. It explodes. The entire stem vine just vanishes. All of the arrows, even the ones that are embedded in Luffy's flesh, just poof, disappear. All of the other members of the crew, like Muchi Goro and the cook and the frog siblings, all turn into plants, just poof like that. And the Baron is like, no! Why? And like everything like melts apart and he's like picking up the rotting, like the rotting plant flesh of his comrades and he's like, why did you leave me? Why? And then Luffy proceeds somehow, even though he was just punctured, he's got like a crap ton of holes inside of him. Luffy just all of a sudden regains his strength and deals the finishing blow against the Baron himself. And then we just kind of cut the scene transitions with the Baron just kind of like talking over the picture of the wanted poster of his crew. And his crew is just like, Baron, we know that you cared about us. We know you were a good captain, but it's you, you should have let us go that day when we all died at sea. You should have just left us go and moved on and found new Nakama. And the Baron is like, new Nakama? And then it just fades away. And it's the next morning. And Luffy's all patched up, none the worse for wear, and the Straw Hats are just fine, they're there, they just popped out of nowhere like, Oh, what's going on here? I don't know, man, I just, oh, hey, look, there's Luffy, hey, what are you doing? Why are you lying on the ground, Luffy? Gee, I swear, you are a crazy captain. And then Luffy's just like, ha ha! End of movie! Luffy just laughs, end of movie. Not just like we haven't seen the most disturbing, one of the most disturbing scenes in the One Piece anime, period. And it's just like, yeah, the crew's fine, Luffy's happy. End of movie, cue the ending theme by, um, actually it's by Kishidan, who does We Can. So later on they would do opening 19, We, D we Can. Uh, it's, uh, even if my time to dream is uh, ending or is 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 nigh? Uh, Yume miru koro no sugimoto, um, and so it's a really good song, but it's like a really energetic, like kind of pop song, and so it's just a really weird way. Like I said, the tone of this movie kind of switches back and forth all over the place, but yeah, the ending kind of hits like a truck in that regard. Holy crap! All right, um, well, that was the sixth One Piece movie. Uh, One Piece, Baron Omatsuri and the Secret Island, or Omatsuri Danshako to Himetsu no Shima. Yeah. Now, does it live up to the reputation, the grisly reputation of being, like, the darkest One Piece movie? Um, 
It does, certainly. Um, you know, there's not really a lot of other imagery in the One Piece anime that kind of rivals what this movie's going for. Like I said, it really does seem like the um, the staff of this movie decided to do something completely different. Like, we're going to do something a little bit more mature, a little bit more, you know, disturbing. Um, and it's kind of like, I, I liken it to, because remember, One Piece is kind of aimed at all audiences, but there's a good chunk of the demographic in Japan that are kids that watch One Piece, right? And so if you were like a little kid watching this movie and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go see the Straw Hats in the theater, and then you see scenes like that with like them all fused together in that abomination, that would probably scar you. That would probably be some, maybe not scar you, but it would be like it would be like when I was a kid and I watched the episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog with King Ramses, where I was like seven years old and like King Ramsey shows up and he's this really weird, jarring CG that doesn't even fit. And it's just like, turn the slab. And everyone's like, ah, you know, and like Courage the Cowardly Dog did that a lot. And so a lot of that is kind of like in my mind as like a disturbing moment from my childhood. It would probably be something very similar to that. This movie was, you know, definitely more than like TVG at a certain point there. But on the other hand, when it comes to, like, the plot or, like, the message of this movie, like, was there even a message to this movie? I would say there is, but it's not super apparent, actually, if you think about it. So... The message on the surface might just seem like, you know, get along with your friends, or even when you're down and out and arguing sometimes, you're still family, you're still friends, you come together and, you know, beat any obstacle or anything like that. But then you also have to look at the Baron, and the whole point of the Baron was he could never get over his deceased crew. So the Baron also never gave up on his friends, just like Luffy would never give up on the Straw Hats, right? The Baron loved his crew so much that he was willing to sacrifice other humans to a weird, demonic, you know, god-devil plant. By the way, we never find out where the hell that damn Lily Carnation came from. Is it just something that was on this island all the time and the Baron just found? Or was it something that he found some other place and brought it there? Was it something devil fruit related? It was just a weird species of plant that just grew on this island. I'm just gonna go with that, because I guess that makes the most sense without asking too many questions about it. It's One Piece. You know, if you want to tell me, like, like, we saw the stomach Baron where Usopp got sent with Heracles in for two years. I can, I, I can believe that there would be a plant like the Lily Carnation. It's just, it's never explained like what it is exactly or how did it get there or how does it grow or anything like that, right? But the Baron used its power to bring his crew back because he loved them so much, right? So I guess, honestly, the message of the movie is even kind of dark in that regard, where it's like, if you love your friends and family too much, you might result in doing some weird eldritch kind of shit. <laughs> you know, you might, like, I love, like, imagine that. Imagine, like, if Luffy lost all the straw hats, if they just all died, and then some creepy wizard, like, necromancer appeared, like, I could bring them back for you. Like, would Luffy accept that deal? Like, the Faustian deal? Be like, yes, bring back my family, bring back my Nakama. And he's like, okay. And then he, like, raises the straw hats from the dead. But they're, like, like zombie straw hats. Like, Zoro's missing a jaw. Like, Luffy. And then, like, like it's like that scene in Bleach when uh, Biaki is fighting Asnote. And, like, that image of Rukia's face, like, melts. And, her, like, her eyeball pops out of her socket. Like, Nami's coming out. Like, she's missing an eyeball. Like, Luffy. You know, it's like, we're gonna be king of the pirates, right? You know, it's like, it's, it's like Luffy loves his family. But, like... Like, too much of it could result in zombies. So I guess that's the message. It's, it's kind of disturbing when you think about it. How many times in this review have I used the word disturbing, creepy, uh, Junji Ito, <laughs> like stuff like that. But it really does go along with his vibe, you know? If, if Junji Ito were to, like, adapt this concept, like, not with the Straw Hats or One Piece things, but if Junji Ito, and he might have actually written a, a story about it already. I haven't read all of his work. I have a few of his compendiums upstairs. I have Gyo and I have Smashed. But if he were to write a story with, like, some weird plants that, like, absorbs people, like, this is, like, right down his alley, 100%. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, whatever it was. Uh, the next movie up is Movie 7, uh, Journey to the Mechanical Island, or Adventure on the Mechanical Island. And, um, yeah, I know it took me like a year to get this one done. Maybe the next one might not take too long. And it has nothing to do with the fact that Nami and Robin's boobs, the way they're animated in that movie, are like insanely shiny and insanely bouncy for no reason. 
So yeah, I'll probably get that one done maybe like tomorrow. So yeah, see you then. Not really, but might be sooner rather than later. Um, thanks for watching the video, everybody. See you next time. And always remember, water your plants.